in the not too distant future as not probes to Mars, but people. An inherently dirty, mucky organism like, like myself. There is a great chance that we will cause utter destruction wherever we go. A strange, invisible assassin stalks its prey. It attacks and hijacks the cell, forcing it to produce hundreds of new raiders. This is what happens when the microcosmos turns on us. In 2020, we experienced this invasion of the body snatchers firsthand. A tiny virus caused a global pandemic, COVID-19. This pandemic makes me see the world completely differently because there was an invisible universe, one that covers me and is within me that I pretty much ignored for the most part. The microcosmos is complex. While some parts kill us, others keep us alive. The microcosmos is important for us to survive in order for us to, to do all of the things that our body does in order for us to live and grow and, and thrive. Our lives depend on the microcosmos, the air we breathe, and the surface of the earth around us has been profoundly affected by the microcosmos. The microcosmos has also taken over our bodies. We're only partly human. The fact that so little of my own body, of everyone's body, is, is human cells kind of leaves you wondering what's the rest of it made of, right? It is astonishing that we share our bodies with over 380 trillion viruses. The question, are viruses alive, is actually more difficult to answer than you might think. What is the definition of life? What does it mean to be alive? NASA's definition of life is a self-sustained chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. Entities that feed make energy and reproduce. Viruses can't do that on their own. They have to have a host cell to do that. They have the genetic material that they need, but none of the machinery. So they really have to infect a host. If not, they're useless. Inside a host's body, Viruses latch onto the surface of cells and then take control. A virus's life cycle is effectively to hack another cell. They have to inject that genetic material into a living cell, and then the cell is hijacked and starts making copies of the virus. Which then have to burst out of this cell, almost literally like that gory, grotesque scene in aliens. Viruses have to have a host cell to replicate. So if you find a virus, in essence, you found life. Viruses might lead us to extraterrestrial life. Now, new research suggests that life on Earth may have come from space. There's this idea that microbes could have hitched a ride on a chunk of an asteroid that would fall to Earth. They could form on a different planet something hits that planet, the rock that it, they're sitting on gets lifted and then hits the Earth as a meteorite. The idea of hitchhiking bugs sounds a bit wild. 4.5 billion years ago, many infant planets orbit a new star, our sun. This infant solar system is chaotic. Collisions between planets are inevitable. The young Mars is in the line of fire. It already has primitive oceans, and perhaps primitive life. A huge space rock smashes into the surface. We call the event the Borealis Impact. It blows quadrillion tons of rock into space. It's not crazy to think that one of these chunks of rock traveling through our solar system has some hitchhikers on board. So the idea of moving life around the solar system or throughout around the galaxy on asteroids poses a lot of different challenges. Events like the Borealis impact ejected so much rock from Mars, there were lots of opportunities for hitchhiking bugs to run the gauntlet of space. But could they survive the journey? To find out, astronauts on the International Space Station grew simple bacteria outside in space. After a year of being in open space, Miraculously, some of these microbes survived. It's incredible. 
These microbes just could not be killed, even though they were in the worst possible environment for life. We got evidence for the widespread distribution of these building blocks in 2017. A strange space rock called Oumuamua raced through the solar system. The weird thing about Oumuamua is that it's clearly on a trajectory that came from deep space, interstellar space, that it literally came from another star. Even weirder, its color, its surface is red. And so that raised a lot of questions about what its composition could be. And one possibility is that it's actually filled with organic materials, which tend to have those colors, especially when exposed to the space environment. This suggests organic materials may travel through interstellar space. The microcosmos gave us life. Now, it could wipe us out. Global warming is releasing potentially lethal bacteria and viruses. Siberia, present day. Rising temperatures are melting the Arctic permafrost, revealing land sealed under ice for tens of thousands of years. As that permafrost begins thawing out and melting with climate change, maybe that will release pathogens that have been locked up for potentially thousands of years. In 2014, researchers investigated melting Siberian tundra a region larger than the USA. I've seen a lot of science fiction movies where scientists are digging around in the ice and find something bad from a long time ago. Scientists took samples of tundra soil to the lab and examined the contents. They found a frozen ancient virus. A virus locked in ice from over 30,000 years ago. Isn't this the start of like every horror movie? A scientist uncovers some deep secret of nature and then just open it up and unleash it on the world. Just like in a bee movie, the team fed the virus to living single-celled creatures called amoebas to see if the virus still functioned after being frozen for thousands of years. The virus woke up attacked the amoebas and replicated. Bringing this ancient virus back to life was sort of waking up the undead. Scientists had no idea how this zombie virus would behave. Something about it was very, very different. It was huge compared to normal viruses. It was substantially larger than any virus that we had seen before. This is the Goliath of Goliaths among viruses. So large, it looks more like bacteria than a virus. We call these kinds of giant viruses Mimi viruses because they mimic other creatures like bacteria. One way the virus mimics bacteria is in the amount of its genetic material. It has 900 genes, eight times as many as a regular virus. Viruses are very simple. They don't require a lot of genes to function. But this virus has more genes than necessary. What is it doing with all these extra genes? We have now found other mimi viruses. 20 years ago, we had no idea that this complex type of virus even existed. We still don't know what all the extra genes do. This type of virus might even be able to generate its own energy, making it closer to bacteria than other viruses. Because it has so many extra genes, this is a virus that is not acting like a virus. We can't be sure how the Siberian Mimi virus will behave if released. And even if it only attacks amoebas, there could be other large complex viruses buried in the ice. They may not be so safe. Now, as humanity expands beyond Earth to new worlds, will we carry our microcosmos with us into space? Or have we already infected our cosmic neighborhood? Space is no longer the final frontier of the future. We're already exploring the solar system. 
We've sent probes to the planets and put boots on the moon. Now, NASA plans to land astronauts on Mars by the 2030s. As a science fiction nerd myself, without even breaking a sweat, I could name 10 movies where people go to another planet and some disease, some alien life form is unleashed on humans and kills us all. I think that has it exactly backwards. If we try to settle on other planets, we have to be really, really careful and really, really think about how we are affecting them. As we launch more and more missions into space, we risk sending Earth's microcosmos with them, endangering the health of the solar system. And if we find a planet that actually has its own biosphere, that has life of its own, we need to be very careful about how we introduce our microbes to their microbes, because it could really be catastrophic for them. NASA does care. Before launching a new probe, a planetary protection team deep cleans every inch. You try to bake the spacecraft, you try to disinfect things. You build everything and keep everything within a clean room, which has a pressure that blows dust out. Everybody wears what are called bunny suits, so nobody touches anything directly. But then, that's still not enough because microbes are incredibly hardy. In the not too distant future, we'll start sending not robot explorers, not probes to Mars, but people. An inherently dirty, mucky organism like, like myself. You can't sterilize a human, you can't remove all bacteria. We have to realize that we are bringing the microcosmos with us, and we may change worlds entirely without even noticing it. Like viruses, we also insist on spreading. We insist on spreading around our world, around our solar system. There is a great chance that we will cause utter destruction wherever we go. Thank you.